we created an endowment that allows the Maison to invite, as we are doing tonight, distinguished lecturers to present keynote uh, addresses at Columbia on important topics. And obviously, a distinguished lecturer, Bernard Stiegler, certainly is. It is a huge pleasure for me to introduce one of the most of the foremost philosophers of our time uh, writing on technology and this industrial age of ours, whom I have had the privilege of welcoming uh, for the last time two years ago when we were both at Northwestern University with a mutual friend of us, Marc Perpon. And I mention Marc Perpon because among the huge amount of books written by Bernard Stiegler, uh, there is this one. Uh, uh, on demo democracy participative, uh, uh, participatory democracy that he wrote in 2007 with uh, Mark Kreppel. Uh, Bernard Stiegler, uh, the most prominent thinker of the techno technical art of industry and consumption, of individuation, uh, uh, and he arrived at that position after a very improbable trajectory that saw him first graduate from prison. I've never been able to reconcile that with the Bernard Stiegler I know. But as he explained himself in Passe à l'Acte, published in 2003, he studied philosophy in a center of detention uh, mm -hmm. where he spent five years for armed robbery. Mm -hmm. Coming out of that uh, uh, situation, uh, that thun thunderous entry into philosophy, he worked on his dissertation, with, uh, which he defended in 1992, at the École des Hautes Études en Sciences Sociales, uh, uh, with an advisor who was no other than uh, Jacques Derrida, with whom Bernard Stiegler has had a conversation which continues today in his writings, certainly. They share, uh, Jacques Derrida and Bernard Stiegler share to think with Husserl, Heidegger, and Gerard Granel, who was a good friend of uh, Bernard. Uh, uh, they had a very long correspondence for a very long time. Uh, Gilles Deleuze is certainly another philosopher with whom Bernard Stiegler's work is in conversation. But obviously, one has to mention, after introducing uh, Bernard Stiegler, Gilbert Simondon, who uh, and his du mode d'existence des objets. Uh, Bernard Stiegler's work has prolonged, <coughs> expanded, and also profoundly transformed uh, Simondon's philosophy of the technical object, uh, with an important reflection in particular on this technical object, which is television. And I would like to mention here uh, uh, Bernard's uh, Telecracy contre Democracy, published in 2000. Six. And also, he has expanded, transformed, and prolonged Simondon's uh, reflection on the central concept, the crucial concept of individuation. And Bernard Stiegler's work pursues the exploration of that concept of individuation in the works he has devoted recently to the institution of Europe in two books uh, uh, on the Constitué d'Europe. Uh, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Bernard is certainly a prolific writer, starting from 1994, La Technique et le Temps, to his latest contribution titled La Mécroissance, a contribution to a volume uh, of perspectives on the crisis uh, that happened a few months uh, ago, which was published this year, just a few uh, weeks uh, ago. His work is widely translated into English, uh, let me just mention here the three volumes on techniques and times. Two of the volumes have been already translated. Uh, uh, techniques and time one, the fault of Epimetheus in 1998. Techniques and times and time two, disorientation, which appeared in 2009. In the French, uh, uh, technique et temps. Le Temps du Cinéma et la Question du Malet, which was published in 2001, is not yet translated yet. It is it will be published <coughs> next year. Next year, we will be, have the pleasure of reading that, acting out the volume of many writings by Bernard uh, uh, has been.
been already published in 2009. Uh, Bernard Stiebler holds and has held many academic positions. Uh, he has been a remarkable director of the Collège International de Philosophy, de Philosophie, professor at the University de Technologie of Compiègne. Uh, since 2006, he is the director of the Department of Cultural Development at Centre Georges Pompidou. Uh, all of you know where that is. And he is also the director of the Institute, Institut de Recherche et d'Innovation that he created. Last but not least, he's the co-founder of his uh, four other, three other philosophers and a jurist yeah. of Ars Industrialis, uh, Association Internationale pour une Politique Industrielle de Technologie de l'Esprit, calling for a renewal, a new life of the spirit. And in their manifesto, they say that they are not afraid of the theological weight of such a word, uh, esprit, spirit, and call for an industrial ecology of the spirit. And I'm sure all these many dimensions of Bernard Stiegler are going to appear in the talk he has given us this evening on transitional objects and systematic infidelity. Thank you. Uh, maybe I can see. Thank you very much, Vashi. It's really, really a good pleasure to see you again here in Cambodia. And Mark Taylor, too, we met, we met 20 years ago in, uh, for the 16th birthday of Jack the Leader. I think it was <laughs> That's where you saw it. <laughs> and thank you very much for Benjamin uh, who organized uh, this uh, event and my invitation. Thank you really, thank you very much also for Maison Francaise from India. Uh, maybe you heard that we listened to uh, music which is entitled Rock Bottom, uh, written and played and composed by uh, Robert Wyatt. And the subtitle of my uh, topic today is Rock Bottom. And I wanted to dedicate this lecture to Mark Taylor and to Robert Wyatt. Maybe you will understand why later. And before beginning, I must quote Paul of Tarsus in his letter to the Philippians but he emptied himself. Whatever its form, a society is fundamentally an apparatus for the production of faithfulness or fidelity. We have learned from Marx Weber that capitalism transformed the type of faithfulness that had such share Western society from a society grounded on the faith of monotheistic religious beliefs to a society based on trust as a form of fiduciary calculability. The crisis of capitalism that has unleashed in 2007, however, a crisis the extent of which was not revealed until 2008, has taught us that this transformation of faithfulness into calculability, effected through the fiduciary apparatus, has now encountered a limit where credit has undergone a massive reversal, turning into what I've tried to think as I call discredit and as a completely new form of disbelief or if you allow me miscreance. I published a book in French 